What's the role of sexual violence in human evolution? Because you mentioned taking uh, Neanderthal females. You've also mentioned that some of these rules are defined by the uh, by the male side of the society. What's the role of sexual violence in this story? I think you've got to distinguish between groups and within groups. Hmm. Um, and um, you, know, I think where the world has been slowly waking up over the last several decades uh, to the fact that sexual violence is uh, routine in uh, war. And that to me says that um, it, it's just another example of power corrupts because uh, you know when uh, frustrated, uh, scared, uh, elated soldiers uh, come upon females in a group uh, that there's been essential dehumanization of, uh, then uh, they get carried away by opportunity. Uh, it is not always possible to argue that this is adaptive uh, nowadays because you know you get lots and lots of stories of um, uh, women being um, abused to the point of, of being killed. Uh, you know, she'll be gang raped and, and then killed. Uh, there's lots of, of uh, terrible uh, cases of, of that reported from all sorts of different wars. But you can see that that could build on a, um, a pattern that would have been a, a adaptive if happening in under sort of much less extreme circumstances. Uh, you know, the, the war is, is very extreme nowadays in the sense that you get battles in which people are sent by a military hierarchy mm -hmm. into a war situation in which they do not feel what hunters and gatherers would typically have felt, which would have been that if we attack, we have an excellent chance of getting away with it. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, uh, you know, you're sent in across the Somme or whatever it is, and and there's a very high chance you will be killed. And that's totally unnatural and a, a novel evolutionary experience, I think. Then there's sexual coercion within groups. And um, so that takes various kinds of forms. Um, you know, but nowadays, of course, I think people recognize increasingly that the principal form of um, sexual intimidation uh, and rape occurs within relationships. Mm -hmm. It's not stranger rape that is really you know, statistically uh, important. There's much more um, what happens uh, behind the walls uh, of uh, a bedroom where mm -hmm. people have been you know, living for some time. And um, just two sort of you know, thoughts and observations about this. Uh, one is that it may seem odd that, um, that males should be, uh, should think it a, you know, a good idea, as it were, to uh, impose themselves sexually on someone with whom they have a relationship. Mm. But what they're doing is uh, intimidating someone uh, in a relationship in which the relative power in the relationship has continuing significance uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that power probably goes well beyond uh, just the sexual. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's to do with domestic relationships, it's to do with the man getting his, his own way all, all the way. Right. It's power dynamics and uh, the uh, sexual aggression is one of the tools to regain power, gain power, gain more power, and that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And and in that respect, um, it's worth noting that although this wasn't appreciated uh, for some time, it's it's emerging that in a bunch of primates, you have somewhat similar, or somewhat parallel kinds of uh, sexual intimidation, where males will target particular females, even in a a group in which the norm is for females to mate with multiple males, but e each male will target a particular female, and um, the more he is aggressive towards her, then the more she conforms to his wishes when he wants to mate. So a long-term pattern of sexual intimidation. Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect. The other aspect I would just, just note is that males get away with a lot compared to females in the any kind of intersexual 
conflict. Um, you know, so the punishment, uh, uh, here's one example of this, the punishment for a husband killing a wife uh, has always been much less than the punishment for a wife killing a husband. Um, and and you see similar sorts of things in terms of the punishments for adultery and uh, and so on. And I bring this up in the context of of males sexually intimidating uh, their partners, be, be it wives or or whoever, um, because it's a reminder that it's basically a patriarchal world that we have come from, mm -hmm. a patriarchal world in which male alliances tend to support males and take advantage of the fact that they have political power at the expense of females. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that all goes back to what happened three to 400,000 years ago mm -hmm. when the beta males took charge and they started imposing their own norms on society as a whole, and they've continued to do so. And you, we now look at ourselves and, you know, Jordan Peterson says, we are not a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's true that the laws try and make it even-handed nowadays between males and females. But obviously, we are patriarchal de facto, mm -hmm. because society still, in many ways, uh, you know, supports um, men better than it supports women in these sorts of conflicts.